Our gospel reading on this Easter morning comes from the gospel according to John, reading from the 20th chapter, and we're reading verses 1 through 18. So let us attend to God's word for us on this Easter day. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, If you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And please pray with me. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts and our minds, may it all be acceptable in your sight. For you alone are God. You are our rock. You are our salvation. Amen. So on October 2nd, in 2019, my younger brother, Monty, went into the doctors. He had been having night sweats and some other things that were concerning him, and and he went in. And they diagnosed him with cancer in his pancreas. Pancreatic cancer is one of the scariest diagnoses you can, you can receive because it is almost always fatal and it progresses very rapidly. And it was something that shook his world. I still remember when he called me and talking with him. I remember where I was sitting. I remember how it felt. Some things happen and and they just are etched in our minds. All the details. And less than a week later, he went in and had a biopsy and found out that it was indeed malignant, but it wasn't your typical uh, pancreatic 
pancreatic cancer. It was a cancer in the pancreas, but not the pancreatic cells. And so he had a good chance of surviving this. And if about a week later, they did the surgery and removed the tail of his pancreas, and he has been cancer-free since then. And he remembers that day even more when the doctors told him it's going to be all right. Those times that that impact us in that way, that that shake our world, those those times are ones that, that just sit with us forever. They change the way we see the world They change the way we act in the world. Because after times like that, we're just not the same. I think we all have those kinds of life-changing moments. Sometimes it's something scary and frightening. A cancer diagnosis. The death of a loved one. But sometimes it's, it's something joyous. An announcement that, that you're now released from the doctor's care. The announcement for a prisoner that they're free. The birth of a child. Things that change our world. That kind of life-changing moment is what the disciples experienced on that first Sunday, that first Easter Sunday so long ago. They didn't expect to see what they saw, and it was etched in their memories. You see, they knew that Jesus was gone. They had followed him for years, three years, and they thought that Jesus was going to Oh, he was going to fix everything. He was going to set the world right by, by making Israel the nation of God again, by, by making Jerusalem the capital of God's kingdom. They knew he was going to come and, and kick out the Romans. But then he was murdered on a cross. They saw him breathe his last breath. They saw the soldiers thrust a spear into his side. They saw Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus take his body down from the cross, wrap it in linen, and lay it in a tomb, a new tomb that had never had anyone else in it. And it was etched in their minds every bit of what happened. And so when Mary and and the women with her, they went to the tomb, they knew exactly where they were going because it was so vivid in their minds what had happened on that Friday. And they got there, and there was no Jesus, no corpse. And they had no idea what to think about that. And so Mary runs to the the other disciples and said, they've taken him away. And Peter and John run to the tomb and they look in and they see that sure enough, there is no body there. But there are the, the linens and there is the faith cloth. There's no body But it's not like it was a grave robber that came in because grave robbers don't leave the things that would wrap the body. They take them with them. But here they were neatly set where Jesus had laid. And they didn't understand what had happened. And Mary sat at the tomb and wept And in comes Jesus. And she has no idea who it is until he calls her name. 
And from that point, nothing is the same in her life. And she is sent to tell, the, tell Jesus' other disciples. And they all encounter the living Christ. And it shakes their world and changes everything about them. We read in, in Acts that reading this morning about Peter, this, this Orthodox Jew who was raised solidly in the, in the Jewish faith. He goes into a Gentile's house. The law of Moses forbid that. But the resurrection of Jesus compelled him to see things differently and to recognize that that God doesn't have favorites. There is no favoritism with him. And although the Jews were the chosen people for so long, now he sees that all from every nation who trust in God and act righteously are, are called by him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We see these these changes where where these people who were frightened to death, they'd seen what had happened to Jesus, they were hidden away. But now they're heading out into the world proclaiming this crazy news that, that Jesus isn't dead. He's alive. They're doing so even when their lives are threatened. All of the apostles, with the exception of John, were killed. They were martyred because they wouldn't take it back. They wouldn't recant their account that Jesus is alive. What happened to them rocked their world, changed their lives, and they rose up as different people. And the amazing thing is that it wasn't just the disciples who were impacted by that. It was the whole world. The resurrection of Jesus completely changed the world. At a time when women were discounted as as not even being reliable witnesses, Jesus sent Mary to deliver the news. At a time when children were considered inconsequential, Jesus said, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, you've got to be like a child. At a time when the nations, the Gentiles, were considered less than, were considered unclean and unacceptable, the resurrection of Jesus said, no, we are the same before God. The resurrection of Jesus changed the way the world looks at women, looks at different races, looks at children, looks at people with different backgrounds, of rich and poor, all those things say it doesn't matter. The world was rocked because of that event. And because of the resurrection of Jesus, the apostles and those who followed them were emboldened to change the world. Because Jesus didn't just come to announce personal salvation to those who have faith. Yes, yes, that is true, and that is glorious and wonderful. But Jesus came to start a revolution. When Jesus rose out of the tomb, it began a new creation. Jesus coming out of the tomb was a clarion call to all of us to rise up and be part of something new and different, to be part of changing the world. We are called, as the early followers were called, to be different from the way the world is. And not in the ways that the world behaves. Paul reminds us in Colossians that we're not to set our minds on on earthly things, but on the things of heaven. 
So when we are called to be changing the world, to be engaged in this, in this revolution, it is not a revolution in which we pick up arms of weapons. It's not a revolution in which we establish governments that are going to enforce the right things. It is not a revolution where we rely on human abilities and powers and authority. It's a revolution where our weapons our love. Because Jesus told us to love even our enemies. Jesus told us to love every human being, whether they are rich or poor, no matter their race, no matter their gender, no matter their wealth, no matter their orientation, no matter anything. Jesus said this revolution that is making the world new requires us to love. And Jesus calls us not to, not to grapple with you know, human ways of, of establishing power, but instead to serve, to be humble. I love the fact that, that when Jesus, Jesus was seen by Mary, she thought he was the gardener. He didn't rise up and say, look at me. Okay. He kept his humility even as the resurrected Lord. Brothers and sisters, the wonder of Easter is not just that Jesus was raised and therefore our sins are forgiven and we can have salvation. The wonder of Easter is that Jesus is alive. And Jesus being alive means that he is leading us even now. This revolution that Jesus is leading is not a memorial. This isn't a call like remember the Alamo or remember the Lusitania. We don't do these things in honor of somebody who was alive years ago and who we admire. Instead, we are following a living God a living person who, having been raised from the dead, lives even now. Jesus is seated right now in bodily form at the right hand of God the Father, leading this revolution and calling each one of us to rise up, to follow where he leads, and to continue the, to change the world until he comes again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.